So starting to put the colour on. So it's going to be reasonably light on this right hand side. And I'm going to drop some other colours into it as well. And as I come across now to the other side, I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. Put a bit more Payne's grey, a bit more of the lemony yellow. Make it a touch darker. Just going to get rid of that big blob before it runs all the way down my paper. Okay, a bit darker again. Over here, I want it fairly dark behind these nice um, rocks, fairly dark rocks. They're quite, quite strong. Just mopping up a little bit of the excess moisture. Okay, perhaps a few bits of that in there. Just mixing up a bit stronger colour here and there, just so it kind of bleeds together. Oop, gonna run. Okay, so we'll just let that do its thing. Now coming down, so using clean water. I'm now going to wet. Just want to knock off a touch more of these because otherwise it's going to run far too much. Okay. Just knock a bit of that off. Okay. So now I'm going to wet the some of these rocks through the middle here now but I'm not gonna to touch this wet area just yet. Okay, because I don't want that green to come straight down into my rocks. So I'm wetting, oops, I'm just wetting the rocks, but not, the, not touching the area. I'm leaving a little area of white before I get to those rocks. And that's quite important, otherwise they'll just bleed straight into this wash, this new wash. And then afterwards, I'm gonna come back and just soften that edge off. There we go, so we just put some water all the way through, all the way through these initial rocks, up into there, so I'm gonna a little bit, never mind. And then we actually, we can continue this water all the way to right down into this rock at the foreground. So this is just water still, more water, more water. Okay. So now I'm going to mix up a fairly light, probably just some of the paint grey to start off with, particularly light at the top section. So up in here is going to be very washy and light. All the way through. There's a nice big puddle there, I'm going to just mop that up before it runs too far. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's just wash that out. <clears throat> now I'm going to put a little bit of um, coming down to that rock there. So it had some cerulean blue, Payne's grey, and a little bit of burnt sienna. There we go. So coming down, and then I'm going to wash in on the shadow side of this rock. So continuing all the way down. So it's only really the water section that's dry. Uh, that's um, so a bit more burnt sienna into that same mix because you want it a bit browner down the bottom here. So under this rock here, quite nice and dark, quite dark through there. Coming down, a few little bits and pieces down there. This side is dark. <clears throat> a 
like a golden and yellow color now into those same into the same mix just to warm it up a touch more just to get a bit of more brightness down in the foreground here because they're quite golden the rocks down at the bottom and I want them to have a little bit more color to it and again it by going back into these washes I'm using slightly thicker color okay not using too thin a color so making sure the paint is a bit more moist uh, more thick I should say not moist I'm gonna wash some of these edges wash some of these out keep it soft near the water and also through right let's just take care of this top edge just going to run my damp brush i think i might keep one or two of these sharper edges because they're quite nice to give a bit of definition to the rocks mm -hmm. but the majority i might just wash away like here where it's meeting that green i might just lose that just using my damp brush to softly merge the edges together a little bit and over here as well a bit there just lose that into the shadow mop that up okay and then i just need a teeny bit of color around this rock just to get it to show up and then that's going to wash away into into the water so I just disappear the edge and again I'll disappear the edge over here a little bit there we go just get that to go away okay so just a little bit more brown now so a bit of burnt sienna and um a little bit of burnt umber if i can find it just want to drop a little, um, some of this at the bottom of these rocks just while it's wet and then we can leave this first wash dry then so a little bit through there a bit there on the back of that rock because the water line is coming through there and then the water is actually coming through here so I need to wipe this back and then just a few brownie bits in here just while this is still moist on that edge comes up and over and up so it's quite a big a biggish rock this one and then I'll just bring that down into there and soften the edge of that off and the edge there Right, and then um, but you know, in there, and then it kind of meets up with some rocks that are underneath it. Um, just to start to develop the back shape of this rock here. Don't want to define the whole edge because that's a little bit too obvious. So. I'm going to leave a gap coming down and then a bit more here then there's darker shapes on this side okay. we've got lots of kind of small bouldery shapes so I'm just going to put a generic wash through there at the moment and some of the texture of the gesso is actually coming through quite nicely here I don't know if you can see it on the on the screen but it's it's playing quite a nice a nice job there of giving me some texture the boulder 
it's almost an abstract really is what you're painting here it's very you want to try and keep your marks very abstract not be too literal to keep mm. it interesting so we've got a face of a rock kind of down here at the water line and i'm not going to paint i'm purposely not painting right up to the edge of that brown because i want a slight tonal change there before we hit the water and as this is coming up behind the big main boulder I have a few little dots there so the main boulder here so i'm going to go a bit more um just to change the color up a little bit again a bit more blue in my wash a bit more purple this is a bit bluey or purpley now So another big boulder in here. And these are all just like little dits and dots and doodads as we like to call them. <clears throat> oh, I'm getting a big puddle of paint there, so I need to mop that up. Let's mop all those big puddles up. So the top side of these edges, I'm just going to soften this one off a bit. I don't like that edge, it's a bit too fussy. And where this turns round into the shadow, I'll soften that down a bit. I'll keep the top edge a bit sharper, but. So we've got a face that kind of comes across here. Almost looks like a boat, one of these rocks. I don't know if you can see it, but behind the big mine boulder, there's a there's a one that looks like a little boat. <laughs> okay. Oops. Just mop some of that up because it's getting a bit heavy. It's going to blow up some of these edges just to soften them down a bit. A bit blue there. I'll give this an underside to this rock, mm -hmm. creating um, a nice um, change in the surface. Mm. Um, I'm going to go a little bit warmer again. I'm going to pop, put some of the yellow and the purple together to give me sort of a brownie colour. Let's take some of that and and really I'm trying to simplify a lot of this as much as possible because there's too much there for me to try and paint all of it mm. well let me rephrase that I'm too lazy to try and paint all of it right. <laughs> um, and so I'm trying to just make up the feeling of rocks without really painting every single rock. So I'm just going to bring that up there because that actually goes up into the up into the trees up there. So I'm going to come across this way a bit, make that into a face of a rock. Mm -hmm. Take that a bit higher. Oh, don't like that shape. Let's go a bit higher there. There we go. A bit there. I'm going to wet along that edge, okay, with some water, like so, with the intention that when I drop my dark colour in down here, it's just going to creep up a little bit into that rock, okay? So here we go. So I'm going to start to bring this now under this boulder bring that up a little bit there a bit more purple i feel there we go under here a bit more blue so fairly fairly strong color you know i don't want to be too too timid here because um i want it to stay quite a nice 
vaporous shadow. So this comes up and then along, should have wet actually a little bit lower there. Let's do a little bit more water. Along this edge. So I can just tease that color along the edge of this rock to there and then it kind of flicks up. <clears throat> just soften that off. And then I'm gonna pull it out with some burnt sienna on the right hand side of the rock. And then I'm just gonna wash that edge away. Just to work into this edge while it's still moist. And drop that in. I'm gonna overlap that rock there, so. comes down behind this one. Up into the background. And it kind of comes along the edge there. And then move into the boulder in the background here and then. I'll drop some colour in on him. Or water. And then there's actually a little boulder just in front of him. Let's put that one in. A bit more purpley. And then maybe one more just to show up the front edge of that one. Make it a bit dark there. Okay, so our water line is going to come through sort of around the rock bottoms here and then across to this lighter area. And that needs to be sort of a greeny gray. So I'm going to go back into the um, Payne's grey and the limey yellow that I used for the background. Mm. Just, just through there, around the edge of this rock, <coughs> over the edge of that rock. So take that out there. Then we've got the same colour coming round this boulder. Bump it up into those rocks. Coming round. And then it meets the top of this rock. A bit more colour here. And then we're almost into our first rapid. So, I'm going to just wash out this front edge in a downward fashion. Come a little bit more yellowy on this right hand side. Coming round this boulder. And then that kind of comes down into where I've got some masking fluid. So this is all masking fluid down here. rock in here it's kind of cross softly that edge and a little bit more brown on this edge so my water then continues across here and around this rock. 
going to dip into a little bit more of the cerulean just to give a bit of variation in the color kind of comes around this rock here and perhaps a little bit in there underneath this edge and that's all going to be washed in so I'm just using water here now just to manipulate these colors so the one is pretty pretty light but have a tiny bit of a a tint of colour. So washing this back. But if you notice I'm trying to keep the direction of the stroke the way that I think the water's flowing. Okay, that's quite important. So this is coming a little bit brownier in a vertical fashion. Coming down a bit more brown coming down to our next area where the water's collecting. Bit of gray. Just underneath this rock. I'm just gonna wash in that to the rock itself. Bit more paint grey again. So he comes over to about there and then cuts in, cuts in there and then comes down here, comes across. And then we can break a little bit into this rock there. A little bit of shadow. And then a little bit heavy. Soften this off because it's water. I mean, round the rock there. I'm much bluer now. A bit more water. All the way through, around that rock. Goes a bit, a bit more golden down the bottom here. these colors a bit warmer a bit browner just some browns down in this corner just to uh, liven that up a bit more of my purple Nice dark purpley bit here. Just on this shadow side of this rock. A bit more shadow coming down there. There we go. So let's start to get some of this in now. Pretty dark. Coming up. So this has got a nice edge to the rock, kind of comes down and I'm going to soften this bottom edge off afterwards. Comes all the way down. And it sort of just disappears out of the picture. And then we're going to come a bit, a bit darker up here.
and we'll bring some darker marks through there. Perhaps a little bit darker on this edge. <clears throat> A little bit more tone in here. Slight change of colour in there. I'm going to put some um, some of the bluey colours in here as well, just to mix it up, just to give a bit of variation. Break it up a touch. more of the blue here and there just drop it in might even drop in a bit of mop up some of this from the side it's all getting a bit wet drop in a little bit of um, orangey colors as well just a few golden -y colors near the top. Perhaps a little bit in there. And I need to do this fairly neat with this colour so it doesn't spread as quickly. Have a little bit of that perhaps in there on those rocks. Just down there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take care of the edge. <clears throat> so along here, I'm just take, running my damp brush just along the edge, just to soften it off. Up there, and then along here. all the way through this area because it's very soft. Should be very soft through here. Pull it down. Soften that off. So plenty of water there just to put that edge. Okay. And then Just soften the top edge here. Um, just going to bleed that into there and then run that around there. Get some of these goldeny colours in there. That rock kind of comes down, down the front here. Bleed some more water in. Give that a look. Right. So coming back to the left hand side now, I need to darken that up a bit more. So using a similar, a similar mix of the dark colours, so the purple, the burnt sienna, and the Payne's grey. Going to start to run some of that colour through these rocks, mainly this rock in the foreground. So I'm just going to wet wet a piece of this shadow area underneath. Some of these areas through there. Take my colour, run it into that wet area. Some rocky, rocky bits there. Coming down. 
and then this is very dark. In fact, it might go even darker. Take a bit of Payne's grey and just drop that in. Darken out even more. The tissue, so that run a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take some burnt sienna, fairly neat burnt sienna, and run that around the, a little bit around the top side of this. To get some shapes developing there. A little bit of dry <laughs> So we'll do brown and a bit of orange with some dark brownie colours and I'm going to dry brush some shape back in here so for this rock. It's going to go much darker, it's a bit of the purple, a bit of the paint's grey together for this shadow. So right under this rock, I want it pretty dark. So coming round this main boulder. Little bits of detail around here. Little chink in that boulder. Okay, and then some more brown. Brownie, <coughs> brownie shadows, I should say. Get some of that in here. Develop up this side of the of this rock. And then because that will then help us to keep this dark on this side. Now more blue, back into cerulean again. Cerulean colours. So back up here, these shadows are going to be bluer, much bluer. So blues. A bit too light that is. Darker. Sort of a dark bluey grey is what I want. That's better. So on the front edge of this boulder that meets the water here. Get all of these like um, cracks and crevices in the boulder. So I'll just put a few indications of those of the same shadow colour. around the back of that. And I'm just going to soften off. Just soften off the bottom edge a little bit. Just a little bit of water. So it's not so crisp. Gonna have a little bit of that same blue in this rock because it's got some fairly dark bits of tone, particularly on this front edge. And there's some like little cut out pieces. Okay. Just wipe the brush off. 
dip into that same color again, just to pick out some of the dark in here. Back here. Just a few little bits and dots of shadow to just show where the edge of the waterline is. Now I'm going to put a wash over this area now because this has actually got a lot of masking fluid on it. So I'm going to put a wash through it and then peel the masking fluid off in terms of shapes. Oh, interesting. What you want to do, Dad? Um, I've I'm trying to do this all in one pass. Coming down, 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 down. <clears throat> so, all the way through here, around that rock, up over here. <coughs> around my main rock, down. Squiggle in the brush, all the way through, there we go, and then down, down and away. So I'm just going to um, tip that a little bit. Let's get some tissue on there just to encourage the water to run this way. There we go. <clears throat> Might even give that a little, a little spray. running away quite nicely to my right hand corner. Just gonna mop that up a little bit. <clears throat> Just wipe some of the excess up. Let's see if we've got anything interesting left. I'm only going to take off the masking fluid in the watery area at the moment. I'm not taking it off in the um, in the background because I'll probably do a little bit more of that on the video. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Clean off my palette again. Taking the same colour I used in the water there, which was the sort of turquoisey, turquoisey blue colour, putting a little bit of the um, orange in it and a little bit of burnt sienna, brown it up as such. Lots of water because I want a very subtle, subtle. Um, uh, transition here. I don't want big jumps, I only want very small jumps. That's a bit more water. Okay, better. So now a very, very washy mix. I'm going to develop up some of the um, slightly darker passages of water that are running over the tops of some of these rocks and start to get the feeling of the water coming down into this gully area coming from this direction it comes around the rocks over the rocks quite a strong current going down there. 
And then we've got some darker bits in here. Darker bits on the edge of these rocks. Wash that away. More blue. So coming down to this area, so kind of it kind of works its way over the top of a number of different rocks here. So I'm just going to simplify it and just get the feeling it's flat on the top here. And then it goes down into our kind of gully area where it's, it's all collecting. That's a little bit bluer there as well. And then we've got lots of breaks in colour down here. And then this is our foamy area. Water coming down the back side of that rock into the foamy area. A bit brown in there. Come round to this big ridge. And then it starts to just tip over the edge. So I'll just wash that away. Keep those edges soft. Okay, a bit more blue over this side. And a bit more yellow in it. Coming round. Still keeping it fairly abstract. ripples and um, you know bits and pieces in the water there a few more here where it's kind of bubbling up okay that'll do that for the minute and then um, I'm going to take some just use a little bit of this fairly neat into my foamy area just to build up some more of these stronger bits of white so, nice bit of foam in there probably could get a bit more foaminess coming give it a bit more direction down through here Just soften it in with my finger. Round that rock. Might even have a little bit of light just on this rock here. Oops, up there. We've got some flicking. Let's do a little bit of flicking. Oops, need a bit more water in the brush. There we go. So a bit of bit of spray coming up here. A little bit into these rocks. A 
Uh -oh. <clears throat> Just going to re wet some of this. Is that it? I'm going to drop this. I'm actually going to tip my board. Hopefully, you can see this. If I tip it that way, can you still see the board? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually going to tip it away from the rocks. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm dropping the colour in from the rocks upwards. That's quite dark green, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Very dark. Yeah. So I want it. I want it nice and nice and strong. Right. Um to start to show up the um a bit more orange in there some of these rocks so if they've gone a bit awry in shape then i'm just use this dark to to help um manipulate those colors and then i'm going to spray it to the left Okay, so now I'm going to move that a touch. So can you see still? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tip it this way so it stays light out there, but gets a bit more colour or a bit more tone, I should say. And keep that little bit of glow, that top left hand corner with glowy, more glowy. Mm -hmm. nice. Till we up a little bit. Bit more water. Tilt it back this way a bit more. So I'm now going to actually bring some of this over the top of some of these rocks just to link it all together a bit more. A bit broken up at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to unify some of these shapes, make some of them stand out, some of them disappear. Continues down into this shadow. A bit dark there. So we've got quite a nice bit of masking fluid on here, so I'm going to darken all that up because that will be light when I peel that off. do some of those shapes there just trying to make it a little bit less broken up and a touch more um, unified in, in, mm. in the colors and the shapes okay. and the object being that I keep it a little bit more colorful in the foreground slightly duller in the background And this big boulder over here, I'm going to make him stand out a bit more. Pull that colour down. So, get a nice top to that one there. And then he can continue across. And then up into this face. Link that to that. Come down a bit. Put 
put a few little, as it gets close, I'm going to put a few little um, indications of notches and different faces within the rocks. Just to add a bit more feeling of the rocks there. Okay, so that kind of goes up. And then we've got a face here. Go across, up, down. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Come down. <clears throat> then we've got some nice darker rock bits on the top edge of this area. So we can start to show that up. <coughs> Lots of little dits and dots in these rocks. Darker through here. <coughs> 